What comes to mind initially when you think of the sea? What about the thundering waves and the beautiful beaches along the shore? Perhaps you consider the animals, the fish and sea critters that make up one of the most diverse habitats on the world. Perhaps your thoughts turn to the boats and ships that sail with the tides? It's a universe unto itself here, but what if it all vanished at once? The land on Earth may house more than 8 billion people and rising, but the majority of the world is water. Water covers around 71% of our planet's surface, with the sea accounting for approximately 97% of that total. For thousands of years, these immense stretches of ocean were so vast that many people believed their horizons continued on forever. Until the era of exploration revealed the full shape and scale of the oceans before them. However, we also know that what we have now was not always the case. For example, at the time of the supercontinent Pangaea, about 200 million years ago, before the Jurassic period, the land was surrounded on all sides by an equally unbroken sea, known as Pantalassa. There are five primary marine regions on Earth today, the Pacific, Atlantic, Indian, Southern, and Arctic Oceans. In total, seawater spans almost 140 million square miles and has a volume of approximately 330 million cubic miles. That's a lot of water. From the surface to the deepest, darkest areas of the seafloor, that's a lot of water. And, happily, there is nothing that could happen in real life, or, at the very least, nothing that we'd live to see the end of that might suddenly dry it all up. But, given the sheer magnitude of the numbers involved, and picturing a previously unknown mechanism that could, somehow, force it to happen, what would happen if the sea disappeared overnight? How would life be different in this hypothetical world without the ocean? The first and most noticeable difference is the issue of travel. Without the sea, everything is land, which implies you could go everywhere on Earth. A trip from America to Europe, for example, would simply be a long travel across what was previously the Atlantic seabed. But would America or Europe still begin and end where they do now? Most likely not. The eastern shore of the United States, from northern Maine to southern Florida, would lose all of its shape if there were no sea. The coast of Portugal and southern Spain would now converge with Morocco and northern Africa. Ireland, the United Kingdom, France, Scandinavia, and the rest of mainland Europe would all now exist on the same, never-ending length of land. You might walk from northern Canada to the southern reaches of Australia, or to regions that were formerly Japanese islands, without ever coming into contact with water. However, if you were to make that journey, the awful truth is that it would be miserable to the extreme. There would be no water cycle without the ocean and, probably, the rivers that used to flow into it. As a result, there will be no rain, clouds, or storms. There would be very little water churning through the atmosphere if there was little to no water on the ground. Without it, life would be put under enormous, almost likely fatal strain. It would be a planet similar to Dune by Frank Herbert. Earth dries to a crisp without the sea. The freshly exposed grounds fracture and burn. The trees that had stood there have died. The luxuriant potential for life on Earth is entirely dependent on the water we have, the vast bulk of which is carried in the ocean. Without it, most plants, animals, and even fungus and bacteria would shrivel and choke to death. Perhaps some of the toughest species, such as tardigrades, will survive. However, the new existence would be more like to that of an extraterrestrial planet than the one we know. The seas already serve as large carbon sinks, so we'd lose that capability as well. As it stands, the sea is home to a vital component of the carbon cycle that is both amazingly complicated and charmingly simple. Tiny plankton and algae absorb carbon from the atmosphere, which is then consumed by their predators, who are then consumed by their predators, and so on. The carbon moves along the cycle while also being regurgitated as a waste product. And, like a ticking clock, it eventually sinks to the bottom of the sea. 
Moving from the top to the bottom and buried by the ocean's sheer strength and depth, carbon isn't cluttering up the environment above sea level while it's below the waves. But, when sea level is no longer a thing since the sea period is only a memory, it's another crucial function that will fail and disappear very quickly. Similarly, because the ocean is essential for absorbing solar radiation, there would be nothing left to keep it in check. Leading to a hotter and hotter, more combustible environment, with fires starting everywhere. The animals that once dwelt in the sea would not vanish, at least not immediately. This is where the case becomes really bleak. As far as the eye can see, there are dead and dying creatures. To the point where, if you were to walk from Canada to Australia, Japan, or anywhere else, you might find yourself swimming through a seemingly bottomless graveyard. While estimates vary, it is believed that the ocean has well over 220,000 known species, with maybe 2 million or more undiscovered. Many are single or simple-celled animals, such as bacteria, while many others, such as fish and shellfish, all the way up to the blue whale, are multi- or complex-celled creatures. They all perish if the ocean is not present. However, without the water and carbon cycles that the oceans facilitate, all else fails. It's absolute death and decay, whether on land or at water. Could humanity make it? In a nutshell, no. Not unless we are entirely different humans throughout the time of this parallel landscape. As CO2 levels rise, oxygen becomes increasingly limited. We wouldn't be able to breathe without the sea. Without water in general, we will perish pretty quickly. Perhaps, if we were to achieve complete mastery over subatomic particles, we could still have some form of water-on-demand capability. However, in today's world, it would be nothing short of a superpower. Perhaps the more likely outcome is that future, different humanity will evolve to be less reliant on water in the first place. And one way to do so is to mechanize ourselves away from the frailties of an organic body. Artificial organs, digitally upgraded brains, and suspended animation till the oceans refill. Of course, if none of that works, there's always the favorite sci-fi immortality solution, digital consciousness. It's unclear how the servers that would potentially contain us would be maintained on a barren shell of a planet with no one to keep an eye on them. But, for now, let's just be thankful that this is something that, one again, will not happen in real life. The seas are not going to vanish overnight, you will not wake up tomorrow without an ocean. That is not to say that our waters will be here indefinitely. Because, in fact, most models for the far, far future indicate that the Earth will one day be devoid of oceans. Perhaps in a couple billion years, when the sun is on its way to becoming a red giant, it will expand and viciously burn and boil everything in its path, including us. Perhaps our now comfortable atmosphere will be the first part of this planet to completely dissolve and the oceans will drain off into space, leaving us to follow in the footsteps of Mars, which, strangely, researchers believe once contained water and seas of its own. Even yet, a red giant apocalypse will be gradual. It'll be long and dreadful, which is why we can only hope that by then, people will have had the foresight to abandon Earth entirely in favor of somewhere else. If nothing else, this is a question that emphasizes just how valuable our oceans truly are. We'd be screwed without them. Without them, there would be no rain, much less oxygen, a dangerous buildup of carbon, and life would very surely perish. You could walk almost any place, but you wouldn't want to. That is exactly what would occur if the oceans suddenly dried up. What are your thoughts? Is there anything we left out? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to stay up to date on our latest content.